this year we have 15 recipients of the Doctor of Philosophy degree in Physics. First today is Marsha, Masha Bhargatar. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I told you I don't follow this group. Too far ahead in the notes. Uh, before that, we're going to hear from uh, a PhD student in physics who will be receiving her degree today. Uh, and our speaker today is Weiling Kimmy Wu, who's originally from Hong Kong. She's earned, earned her undergraduate degree from the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. And here at Stanford, her graduate advisor is Professor Chao Lin Kuo and her research has been in the field of cosmology. <coughs> After graduation, Kimmy will work as a postdoc at the University of California at Berkeley. Kimmy. Hi, physics class of 2015. Parents, family, friends, welcome. Um, so I'm very honored to be speaking today, and thank you for the opportunity. And this is running long, so I try to keep this short. So one of one of the PhD comics, which I know you all read, is titled "Your Life Ambition: What Happened." <laughs> so it's a it's a three panel comic. On the left side panel, you got a bright-eyed college grad <laughs> holding his diploma, his diploma saying, world, here I come. And in the, in the center panel is a graph. So on the y-axis, it says your ambition. And on the x-axis is the year in graduate school. And it is a downward trend. <laughs> So, as first years, the goal is to win Nobel Prizes in revolutionized fields. Second year, they're, they're happy to, to get a job at a top university. Very good goal. And third years, they're, they're, uh, they want to get a job in, in a university. And fourth years, um, well, maybe we can get, go, get, go, go to a conference in the middle of nowhere. Um, then you get the fifth years. Uh, I just want a Tuesday colloquium donuts. <laughs> so then on the, on the left, leftmost panel is a grad student in his fifth year, sitting in front of his computer in a dark, sun, sunless room. And on the... Uh, <laughs> And, and with the same enthusiasm, he exclaimed, Happy hour, here I come. <laughs> I look at this and ask, How much does this comic reflect our own PhD journey? Some of you will protest immediately, saying, No, PhDs takes longer than five years. <laughs> But, 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 so this is PhD Comics, we, we think it's funny because it's cynical. But, 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 it's behind the cynical portrayal of what happens to our life ambition as we enter the PhD, as I think many of you guys will, um, <coughs> I think there's a deeper insight uh, that is rather positive. Uh, and that it is um, the PhD journey that finds our goals. So I emailed my graduating physics cohort and ask them to tell me how they would describe their own PhD journeys. Among the responses I got, fun, sunny, which is well describes the Stanford campus. I also get undulating, and this is my favorite, Dr. Strange Love, or how I learned to stop caring about buying a Tesla S and <laughs> decide to become a postdoc. <laughs> these, are, these are all excellent. So, so, so starting PhD, yes, we know that problem sets, they all have definite answers. But in research, 
Half of the time, we're not sure if we're asking the right questions. Even when we know that we're asking good questions, that the, the technique approaching solving the problem could be so complex that we get segmentation faults all the time. For the experimentalists among us, lab work can be even more daunting. You see, while in equations, we can just assume spherical cows, <laughs> you, you just can't build a truly spherical cow in lab. <laughs> Gravity probe B might be the closest we have. So oftentimes, things don't work the first time, uh, the second time, or the nth time. So in those long, dark weeks or months, um, of things not working, patients are tested, and doubts arose. We ask ourselves, am I cut out for research? And why am I working on this with so little pay? <laughs> Should I consider switching topics? I think it is in those long, hard moments that our goals are refined. We, we could recognize our strengths, our weaknesses. Uh, we make note of work, the kind of work that we like doing and the kind of problems that, keeps, keeps, that keep us going even when uh, the possibility of solving them seems bleak. <laughs> and coming out of those, the other end of those long, dark periods of things not working, um, the questions that you set out to ask oftentimes have grown into other sets of questions. And if they are not solved, um, you learn many new methods to go about solving. And I think this is it. Um, this is what we're getting our PhDs for, uh, learning how to ask good questions and learning how to go about finding the solutions for them. In the process, we become more resilient. We don't buckle when, when the first method does not work. We try and try and try and try. And may I suggest a youthful proclamation of revolution, revolutionizing the field now looks more like, I can use this method to solve that problem, and that will give us a better constraint on those parameters. The latest sounds a lot less grandiose, but I think it's closer to actually revolutionizing the field than the former. So yes, goals and ambitions are refined through our grad school journey, like wars worked into swords. There are gloomy days when the only thought of carrying you forward are Tuesday colloquium donuts. <laughs> and there are joyous days when everything just work. And there are days like this one, when we look back and celebrate how far we've come and thank our loved ones for their support all along. Um, let me congratulate the physics class of 2015. May we go forth, solve hard problems in our fields and in the world with resilience. Thank you.